All right, so we got Dragon Age the Velgar review. This is IGN's review. We're gonna check this out. I'm gonna give my own, like, you know, uh, verdict at the end of the video. So make sure you guys, you know, stay tuned for that. Let's get into it. As I excitedly slashed, blasted, wooed, looted, and delved my way through the stunning and enthralling world of Dragon Age the Veilguard, I kept having one thought. Wait, Bioware made this? 2024 Bioware? You're really selling it. With this game coming in the wake of the debacle that was Anthem, itself <laughs> preceded by Dragon Age Inquisition and Mass Effect Andromeda, which were both merely all right in hindsight, I wasn't sure these former masters of the role-playing game craft could make a game like this anymore. But putting together my team of interesting and endearing companions to save the world felt like getting the old band back together. Okay. In more ways than one. Arch demons attacking the north wall. Try the horn. The north wall. The arch demons too loud. No one's retreating. <laughs> There's no choice, sir. We're under siege. All right, hey, hey, comment down below real quick before IGN, you know, uh, get started with it. Comment down below. What do you guys think about it? Your honest, like, you know, review. If you guys played it, I have not played it yet. I know it came out on Halloween or whatever. I got busy with Warhammer and stuff like that. My, that's my bad. That's no, I can't apologize. Okay. We Dragon trap. Forget the trap. Send word to Commander Yanos. Rally outside the wall. The scope of this adventure is the whole north of Thetis, sending you from the coasts of Ravain to the blighted wilds of the Anderfells, as you attempt to prevent the rise of an ancient and menacing evil. It was thrilling, as a longtime fan of the series, to finally see so many of the places I'd only read about in a journal entry way back in 2009. And the way Bioware has us go about that exploration is very focused and deliberate. Veilguard's level design was one of the first things that jumped out at me, reminding me of the original Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic almost more than anything. The slick, looping corridors with just enough little nooks to discover are cleverly interconnected in a way that proves how a Bioware-style RPG gains a lot and loses almost nothing by ditching the idea of a fully open world. The exceptions to that are a couple of the more vertical sections of the city of Minrathis, which can be a little bit of a pain in the ass to navigate sometimes. Okay. Ooh, 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 okay, 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 okay. I'm gonna be honest with you. That right there... You don't know how many games have that, like, have that mechanic to where, like, like, like some of their mechanics, especially, like, the mechanics of you, like, going from, like, building the building or whatever, or you, like, miss, not even you miss time in the jump, but just, like, simple stuff is you, like, jumping off of, like, something or whatever, and you know that, you know, that you can, like, get to, like, the other platform, but then, like, it kind of, like, 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 it's, like, the, it's, the mechanic is weird. I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. I played so many games like that. It's crazy. The thing is, I wouldn't call that like a deal breaker or nothing like that. But at the same time, like there, there's a lot of games that do go through that. Um, I will be honest, though. Again, never played Dragon. Um, dra uh, what was it? Dragon Bell. Never played that before. I will be honest, though. I did check out some gameplay before. Uh, I, I believe I checked out some gameplay at the beginning of October. And um, if I'm being honest with you, I did like the gameplay. I mean, this is coming from like a new player or whatever. But if you guys actually, you know, played like this series before, um, you will have like uh, like a much more insight about this game. But I did check out, I think I checked out what, 22 minutes of gameplay and um, I, I did like it. Um, and so, yeah. Across the board though, the environment art is really jaw dropping. It, yeah, from I agree. the desolate peaks it looks of good. Kal Shirak to the surreal floating elven ruins in Arlathan Forest. I was very pleased with the character designs too. The armor and outfits are fabulous. I spent more than an hour in the character creator, like really? I usually do, and came out with a version of our protagonist, Rook, who delighted me every time she was in frame. This might be some of the best looking hair I've ever seen in a video game. I'll bet. Even with you know what, I'm gonna be honest with you. The hair does look nice. The hair does look, I mean, the, the overall game looks really, really nice. Like the scenery looks nice. Um, the textures, like the hair textures, he is right. It do look nice, but bro, I think like the best thing that looks nice to me, bro, is like, like the, um, and listen, if you're a Dragon Bell, uh, like Dragon Bell fan, whatever, like Velgar fan, whatever, I'm sorry, but like, bro, this right here, like the magic, the attacks and stuff like that, bro, 
Oh my goodness, bro. Like, and again, if you're a Dragon Age, you know, Velgar fan, my bad. I'm sorry if, if I don't know what that is, bro. But this looks beautiful. I said that uh, in my 22 minute reaction video uh, like a month ago or almost a month ago. With all of that visual splendor, I was able to get a stable 60 FPS at 4K on my RTX 4070 Super with DLSS set to maximum performance, which usually didn't affect the visual quality in very noticeable ways. The one exception to this was in the late game when there could be so many spell effects going off at once that I not only lose frames, it's also just difficult to even see what's actually going on. I mean, well, I'm sorry to pause it again. I mean, but like, to be honest with you, I mean, like to be fair, you know, to the game or whatever, uh, and I think, do you say Bioware made this? To be fair to them, I mean, bro, this game has so much going on that like, I mean, I don't, I mean, let's, let's, you know, let's just keep it real, bro. This game has so much like going on in your screen. So I don't blame if the frames are dropping that bad. I mean, now listen, I will say this though. If you like, if you have like a top notch PC, or whatever, let's say you're playing this on a PC. If you have like a top notch PC or whatever, and you're still dropping frames, then at that point, okay, it might be the game's fault or whatever. So, um, but I still want to give off some like slack, you know, uh, for, for Bioware because games like this, bro, that have so much going on in the screen and you don't know what's going on. Um, a lot of games that have that, bro, they do drop frames. They do confuse you because, again, there's so much going on. There's so many, like, effects going on and so much magic and all this, like, you know, so. Through the crackle and sparks, though, Veilguard's combat is definitely a refinement of what we saw in Dragon Age 2 and Inquisition. I've always preferred the more tactical style of Dragon Age Origins or Baldur's Gate 3, but that ship sailed so long ago for this studio, not even the Evanuris remember what it looked like. And so, judging this very action-focused combat system for what it is, it's pretty good. Bioware has committed fully to the fast-paced style and refined it to a point that I enjoy it quite a bit. And the ability to pause and issue party members orders, just like in Mass Effect. I like that. Still I like gives that. some opportunity for more tactical. I mentioned that uh, in, in, the, in the reaction video, like last month that I did of the 22 minute gameplay, whatever. Um, and bro, like I, I'm going to keep referring back to that video. And I'm not like like promo in that video. I mean, I kind of am like because I just now noticed that I'm promo in that video, like unintentionally, whatever. But like, bro, that was like my first time ever, you know, really seeing like some gameplay upon that, you know, upon this game, because I never played this game before ever in my life. I never, you know, played. Uh, I don't really play games like this before, like, you know, uh, like the Baldur's Gates, like the um, what are the games? Uh, 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 um, uh, um, and, and listen, there's some other games like that that are just like this. I don't really play games like that. So to see a game like this, bro, like with the with the uh, with the magic effects and like stuff like that, and then with the thing to where you can pause it and like call in other things. And I'm gonna be honest with you, that was fire. So um, I like that as well. Players like myself to look around the battlefield and consider our next move. See, it I like that. It feels better on a controller than mouse and keyboard, though. Really? I was somewhat disappointed that party members are more like extensions of your own character in combat at this point, rather than their own entities. They don't even have health bars, for instance. They can't be knocked out, whereas you instantly lose an encounter if Rook goes down. They do have equipment slots and skill trees, though less than what Rook gets. But overall, the amount of customization available for the whole squad through piles and piles of interesting upgradable loot was more than enough to satisfy my RPG appetites, if not fulfill my wildest fantasies of intricate battle management. In my 100 hour, near 100%, almost obsessively completionist playthrough, I styled Rook as a Spellblade, a mid-ranged melee hybrid mage, and really enjoyed the playstyle once I'd unlocked all of my core tools. Ooh. Dancing like with a that. dagger through a lightning storm I summoned, darting out of danger and then back in for a lethal blow is- Okay, that was hard. I'm gonna be honest. Yo, yo, yo. These little, um, 
These animations and stuff like that, I'm gonna be honest with you. They're kind of cool. I like that. Just hey, they didn't show that off in the 22 minute rewards, thing. It's precise timing and wise target prioritization. This isn't the tactical Dragon Age of my youth, but it is a Dragon Age I can vibe with. And the highlights of combat are definitely the boss fights, which offer a really satisfying challenge, even on the default difficulty. While standard mob fights with Darkspawn or Venatory cultists eventually got a little repetitive after 90 plus hours, going up against a high dragon never failed to get my blood pumping, as I had to carefully study attack patterns and think on my feet. That does look fun. Yeah, yeah, all right, before he moves on to like the next thing, I would say this, because I didn't even see like any like boss fights in like the um in, like in my last reaction video to uh, Dragon Age. Um, I didn't see any boss fights. I don't think I've seen it. And if I did, then I must have forgot. Um, the boss fights in here does look really nice. This whole dragon, obviously, like, you know, like a dragon has to be a part of the game, bro. The, like the name of the game is Dragon Age. So it would only make sense that, that, that the boss that I see is a dragon. Um, the dragon looks pretty cool. Like, bro, a lot of these like boss fighting games, bro, I'm bro. Like that's really t like, and I might, you know, uh, get disconnected from the game real quick when I talk about this, but Bro, a lot of these, like, boss fighting, and I'm not even going to say soul games. I'm just going to say, like, these games to where, like, you know, you're going up against, like, you know, these bosses or whatever, bro. That's really taking over 2024. Obviously, like, you know, a lot of video games or whatever, duh. Like, a lot of video games have bosses where, you know, you're supposed to beat them or whatever. And then, you know, you move on to, like, another boss, another boss, etc. But, bro, like, this year, if you really think about it, bro, a lot of, like, the top games, uh, a lot of the, you know, the, the most loved games this year, bro, are you know like these boss like these boss fighting games and they're not just soul games some of them are like rpgs some of them are no no no. well yeah some of them are rpgs and some of them are soul games so they, it, it's literally but like between those two um but it's crazy how like 2024 is legit full of like these like it's you versus this big you know boss just just flying around or like you know just 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 crushing you or whatever obviously elder ring black myth wukong um and, and stuff like that so yeah I just thought I had to point that out because like 2024 has been like the year of like like of like the Souls games or like boss fighting games, even though it's not like it's not the same thing, but like there are some similarities about it. In the sense that a Bioware RPG is really about your companions, also known as the friends we made along the way, this might be the most Bioware game of all time. Not only is the whole hey, I thought that was Deion Sanders. Complex, Look at him, you like Deion Sanders a little bit. Distinct personalities from across Thetis, but they're all treated as the stars of their own story. Veilguard is light on that classic kind of side quest that's like, help Bingo Bongo find some nug grease. And I don't miss those much because they've been replaced by full length heroic arcs for each companion with twists, turns, a personal nemesis, major character developments, and a moment of triumph fit for a protagonist rather than a sidekick. Our rogue necromancer has hidden something terrible behind this door. It's like the writers took the loyalty missions from Mass Effect 2 and blew them up into seven miniature games of their own. Almost every side mission ties into one of these, which obliterates the sense that you're just doing busy work. Nothing I'm seeing makes me want to look away. Picking a favorite of the seven Veilguard members to talk about genuinely feels like an impossible task. I really want to just say all of them are my favorite, but I had a rewarding romance with the stoic Grey Warden Davrin and became mother to his fledgling griffin pal, Asan, so he's got to be my pick for this playthrough. Asan, that is. Seriously, if anything ever happens to this little guy, I will wash Thetis away in a tide of fire. The Yo, IGN, ch check on your mans. What did he just say? He'll wash what and what? IGN, check out your boy. That was, yo, he, yo, he said he'll do what? That sounded like a threat to me. Vincent Price-inspired gentleman necromancer Emmerich is also a delightful twist on the usual edgy goth death mage tropes. We'll be fighting weirder stuff than necromancy. And while we've been asked by the devs not to spoil specifically who I'm talking oh, nah, about come here, on, spoil it, come on. as a non-binary person myself, 
Veilguard includes some of the most authentic representation of coming to terms with general gender stuff and having to navigate your family's reaction to it I've yet to see in a game. It doesn't feel like an after-school special or like I'm being pandered to. It's quite well handled, and finding out that the writer for this character is non-binary themselves did not surprise me at all. A damn good looking hero, if I do say so. They just switch accents? Okay. The larger plot that's threatening the world in the background as we're doing all these more personal quests is nothing particularly outstanding in its overall structure. We need to unite some factions to fight some evil gods who are trying to do bad things with tentacles. Okay. The major wrinkle that makes that interesting, however, is Solus, also known as the Dreadwolf, Fenharel, the elven god of lies and rebellion, waiting in the wings, keeping me guessing about whether he was a friend or foe. I need to know what the gods are planning. You are asking for knowledge no mortal in this world is privy to. As a continuation Case of the Dragon Age series, Veilguard does feel a little disconnected from where we left off a decade ago. Oh, see, if you were see, like whenever it comes to like them connecting, like you know, games and stuff like that. Oh yeah, I'm lost. I'm gonna be honest with you. Y'all can have this part. Wait, listen, I'm gonna listen. I'm just gonna keep it real. I'm not even gonna sit here and act like you know that I that I was a part of the whole Dragon Age uh, Inquisition. You know, I'm not. I'm not gonna sit here and act like that. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna sit on the sideline and let y'all handle that. You know. <laughs> from previous games in the series to carry over, I'm sorry to say they've never mattered less. Oh, wow. You only get to import three choices, one of which only comes up in the context of a single letter you may or may not find and read. You do get to recreate your Inquisitor from Dragon Age Inquisition, the same way Inquisition let you recreate your Hawk if you played Dragon Age 2, and the Inquisitor ends up being a fairly important character, which was cool. It isn't just Inquisitor, is it? You were someone before that. But things like who you chose to make the head of the Chantry at the end of Inquisition never come up. There's no sign of the Warden from Origins, even though you visit the stronghold of their order. Hawk gets only a passing mention. There are some other cameos from both Origins and Dragon Age 2, but those characters conspicuously don't reference any important choices you may have made in their presence. This story feels like both a send-off and a soft reboot in a way, which was a bit paradoxically refreshing and disappointing at the same time. Agreed. The pacing early on is kind of weird too, and I felt like I could practically smell the rewrites. For example, Dang. it's hilarious that no one ever says the word Veilguard out loud across the 100 hours I played of this dialogue-packed campaign. I mean, okay, um, okay. I mean, I, I, like, unless this game is known for, like, unless this game is known for saying like some of the words that are like in the title of the game in the story then i mean some games i mean wait when was the last game okay that's like that's like detroit become a human i'm gonna be honest with you and unless you know you, your boy you know needs like an like, uh, like a hearing test i i promise you i don't even think a no name i don't even think a guy that had one line in that game ever said detroit become a human i i don't think so now if i'm wrong i'm wrong like I don't really think a lot of games really mention, you know, like they're like the like the name of the game in the script. I don't think I don't think so. I don't think so. I, I listen, I know some games do, but I don't think a lot of games do that. Exposing a last minute marketing pivot for what it is. You're making us sound like Solus. That's uncomfortable. But it doesn't take too long for things to get on a good track story wise, and when they do, they stay on it. Yo, oh my goodness, man, Aside brush your teeth. from one huge choice you'll make early on, the most interesting bits of narrative design don't come up until the very end of Veilguard's story. And again, it's hard to dig into this too much without spoiling something, but the finale is also very much in the spirit of Mass Effect 2, which has an ending that, up until now, may have been the best series of complex, consequential choices ever featured in an RPG. 
The sacrifices Man, he I missed to every bully. The closing hours hurt. The wise decisions I made paid off, and I even got the chance to dramatically flick an ace out of my sleeve at the very last moment, specifically because I took a very thorough and careful approach to everything leading up to that. It really felt like the ultimate reward. Attack! Oh! Throughout Bombs it all, away. the cinematic flair is off the charts, proving that BioWare is unmatched in the RPG world in that particular discipline. So much of the best stuff I can't even show you here, but parts of it felt like watching a big budget fantasy movie in the best ways. Real quick, we got like two minutes left. IGN, they're definitely giving this a... They're definitely giving this... A, bro, I'm guessing at least an eight to nine. They might even just give it a nine just out of spite. I don't know, bro. I haven't heard one. I mean, I heard a few critic like criticisms, but I haven't heard, you know, this guy straight up just be like, oh, this is absolutely horrible. Da, 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 da. Yeah, this is definitely an eight, eight or above. Eight or nine. A triumphant and effective Watch this. Watch not this. quite iconic score elevates these moments further. The Verde! Dragon Age the Veil Guard refreshes and reinvigorates a storied story oh, yeah, that and stumbled up. through its middle years eight and, up. and leaves no doubt in my mind that it deserves its place in the RPG pantheon. Watch this. The next Mass Effect is going to have a very tough act to follow, which is not something I ever imagined I'd be saying before I got swept away on this adventure. It's good to have goals in life. Enjoyable action True. combat. A fantastic cast of allies with sweeping story arcs all their own, top-notch cinematics, and moving nuanced character writing are the wings on which this triumphant dragon soars. Pulling out all the stops in a whirlwind tour of Northern Thetis, and capping it with a terrific finale that's built on memorably tough choices and consequences. If we never get another Dragon Age, at least it got to go out on a high note. They gave this thing a nine? Brother, when's the let bro? All right, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, hold up, hold up. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Now I told y'all they're gonna get this game an eight or a nine. I told you guys that. I'm gonna be honest with you. I was expecting an eight. No shot I was expected a nine. There was no way. I was just saying nine just to, you know, whatever. They gave it a nine. Okay, so they're serious. They gave it an amazing. Okay. Um Okay, here's what I'll say about this, right? IGN gave Dragon Ball Sparkling Zero a seven. I thought that game should at least been like a nine or a ten. Um Wow. They gave this a game a nine. I was not. All right, here's the thing though. See, I'm not specific. I'm not. I'm not all the way blown away. And the reason I I say that, and and when I and like when I say like I'm not all the way blown away, I'm not all the way blown away at them giving this game a nine. The reason I say that is because in that 22 minute uh, reaction video, um, that I did like a month ago of dra uh, of uh, Dragon Age Velgar whatever, I think it was like 22 minute gameplay. Did I react to, and I'm going to be completely honest with you. Um, the gameplay looked really good, bro. The gameplay re looked really good, bro. It looked really fun. It was different. Um, and again, this comes from a guy who's never even played Dragon Age before. N never, bro. Um, and, and, and so if I'm being like, you know, just completely honest, you know, completely real, bro. I thought that the game was going to do really well. I was actually waiting for this game to come out on Halloween. I ended up getting caught up with Warhammer. So let's go thank Warhammer. Uh, I end up, I end up uh, getting caught up with Warhammer lore. I've been like, you know, checking out Warhammer videos, um, and, and Mortal Kombat videos and stuff like that. That I have not been able to come back to Dragon Age. I literally was about to do a Warhammer video, literally like before this, but I was like, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. I gotta react to this, you know, to this Dragon Age review from IG. I want to see what they give it, uh, and they give it a nine. So you know, we got our answer. Comment down below. What's your honest opinion about this? Um, I mean, to be honest with you, I mean, I don't even want to say that they don't even deserve the nine or whatever. It's just I wasn't expecting them to, you know, to give, you know, this game a nine. Because let's be honest, bro. IGN, bro, bro, you got to have a game from heaven itself, you know, from them, from them to uh, give you a game a ten. So um, I wasn't expecting a nine. Um, I was expecting like an eight. 
but um they gave it a nine man again comment down below what do you guys think about it um i'm gonna give you guys my verdict real quick before i end off the video uh looking at the gameplay i haven't played the game yet but listening to what other people gotta say including ign a lot of, i did hear a lot of good news about the game obviously i heard some people say they didn't like the game or whatever um they called it like repetitive like uh repetitive um ign said that they liked it whatever and they also called it repetitive as well um so if i'm being honest with you i would most likely this is like a pre-verdict before i actually play it because i really do want to play this game i'll give it an eight i i don't know about nine right because like my rating bro bro if a, like dragon ball sparkling zero is a nine to me i'm gonna be honest with you uh but i would definitely give this an eight it's like a pre-verdict or, or a predict so other than that man again comment down below Make sure you guys like the video and subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. I'll see you guys at the next time out. And peace out.